Hi guys, well today's little project, it's not particularly brilliant weather outside today, so as you know from my previous videos, the bogey problem with this and the replacement is here. So we are going to take this one apart and fit the replacement bits inside so that I have a full set of working wheel sets. So the first thing we're going to do is move some bits out of the way so we don't the actually use them for screws. Move that out of the way <coughs> and we'll take this bogey apart to find out how it comes to pieces before I actually take the one apart on the loco. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take off the buffer beam and all that it's got is one screw left holding it down there. And the split pin that holds the coupling in. We're going to have to remove that. So we've got six screws in the base plate. And that shows us the drive track. So this here is the gear that I need. Second to the end. So we'll just drop the driving wheels out. All straightforward, nothing in there. Okay, so now we've got to separate the two halves. So I can see one, two, three, four screws in there, one to clamp the engine motor. So hopefully that will now come apart, unless I'm missing something. Yep, there we go, so we'll just keep all these gears. And there we go, I have all these spare gears. Try and keep them where they came from. Okay, so now we have the train of gears. The two motor gears here and the motor worm drive fits between these two. These are the ones that if they're going to break, it will be these ones to split. We'll see in the future whether that happens on these, like it has with my 47s and 33s and various other classes that they have made with that issue. But for now, We've got good gears. This is the gear I want, so I shall take this out, keep him here, and now I shall reassemble the two halves with the motor to try and keep everything in place so I don't lose any and I know which order they are if I need anything in the future. So I'm going to start, I might have to put this down to do this because it's going to be fiddly. We've got the little ball pivot and the spring the 
pony wheels here at the front to fit in. They just got a little cut and socket. They're going to be awkward because they want to drop out. And then we've got this half with the motor still attached. Let's see if I can get the two halves to mate together. Actually, I haven't dropped the back. I don't need that in there for a minute. Let's see how close we can get this. Ah, the bogey pivot is in the way. Sometimes you need more than the hands you got. And now I have to try and get all the shafts in all the holes. Screwdriver. So we'll try and line these up, see which ones are tight, which ones drop in. Otherwise we're going to be abandoning this idea and we'll just dump them all in a in a tub. I can see a tub coming on here. Let me just take this out of shot for a minute and uh, see if I can line these all up. All I can say is, it's a good job Hellgen aren't paying me to fit these by the hour because I don't think I'd receive any bonus. So now we'll try and get the bogey pony truck in. Now these have popped out again. This is just... This is just not a job that I would want as a real job. two halves together. It's right practicing on this one because I've got to do it on the one on the model so I'm quite happy to practice. And then we'll slip the motor back in. Try not to spread everything apart again. So I'm just going to stick a screw in stick a screw in the front to hold the two halves together at the front. Let's see if that helps free up a hand. through the gap and So that's the two halves held back together and I shall just drop the wheel sets back in and put the base plate back on.
this nut right now. Well, I recommend one of these at the tubs. It's helpful to hold the thing in. But these bearings are horrible. The bearings don't want to sit in properly. On this, that wheel set, I think the slot might be damaged as well for whatever reason. But uh, I can't get this rear axle to sit in. The front one's fine, the front one just dropped in. It's not a bit tight, so I'm just going to put the two screws in, and that'll do. That'll hold all my parts together if nothing else. So anyway, I'm going to go and wash my hands because I'm covered in grease and then I'm going to take that body shell off of that and we'll make a start fitting this gear to that loco. Right, so I've now washed my hands, clear with grease from the other bogey. We'll now take the body shell off and we have four screws. One there, one there and the same on the other end, so that's four screws. Fourth one. So, from what I can see here, I've reassembled this bogey complete with the end frame. So it's this one where the wheels should turn. This one. So, to take the bogey out, what can I see? Oh, this is going to be fun. So, the first thing we have to do is take the frame off the bottom so we can drop the wheels out because inside up above here is four screws for the um, bogey pivot retainer thing Do in the future the um, split gears if they occur in the future you're gonna have to do all of this as well so I'd rather not have to do it given how things have gone in the past with the other logos there's a reasonable chance that uh, it's going to be the same on these. Right, so there we go. There's another screw here. Somewhere. There it is, and there's the wheels with it. I'll keep them in order. So that's the centre, that's the back. So they're all in order. And now, I don't know if you can see, but four screws, one, two, three, four, 
to release the saddles. So you've got these little plastic saddles with four screws that hold it all together. Somewhere in here, these two screws are stuck to the motor. That's fine, we know where they are. What we've now got to do is follow these wires back and uh, I think we'll get a photo with my camera so I can remember where the wires actually go to. So basically what we have is a grey and an orange and this one turns to be a motor B which is the third and fourth screw in this little terminal board and a black and red which is from the fifth and sixth screw. Um, so can't bring it closer because the bogey will fall out so I'll just disconnect those but take a photograph so you can definitely get it right when you wire it back together again so motor B is that one there and that one tiny little screws so that should be I'm free and so should one. So that's the motor wires disconnected, and then we got the a black wire from the pickup, which is being twisted together with a pickup from the other end, and the red from the other side of the pickups. Simple. So now that should just drop out. So here we have the orange and grey wire, orange and grey which is the motor and the black and red which are the feed wires. So there's the other retainers, one of the screws. And the other screw I've got to get because it's stuck on the motor because of the magnet. There we go. Right, so now we're up to there. So now we should just pop off the side frames of the bogey. Should. Oh, let's break that one. Oh. Okay, well one's alright, and the other one has cracked and split, so I'm going to try and fix that with some super glue. Okay, so that's that super glued back together with a bit of super strong super glue and now we'll get on with taking the bogey frame apart so we've got to remove the split pin from the coupling so we'll do that get out a pair of tweezers on it. So you've got that split pin there that holds the spring. So you've got to pull the spring back to release the tension and pull the split pin out. That should come out nice and easy. And there it goes. And on the end of the spring is a washer. 
and the coupling comes out. With the spring and a small flat washer. So we can now turn it upside down and remove the two screws underneath to gain access. Okay, so two screws. So now back onto the tricky part. So you've seen what I've done. I've got four screws, one, two, three, four to undo, separate the two halves and then swap out this gear. Now I'm going to do that off camera. You don't need to watch me do this again. But again, here we go. Here's the hard part, trying to get the gears lined up so that they all sit in their appropriate holes on both sides. Uh, which one now? I'm going to have to take it by the window because I can't see. So I'm going to be back in a second. Okay, so now having gone to the window to get some natural light so I can see what I'm doing, I've managed to pinch the two halves together. So I shall now screw in this screw at this end, that's better. So that I can just open this end here a little bit, not too far. I'll put a screw in to capture that so that I don't go and drop all the gears out again. Just stick another one in the front a couple of turns just to limit the travel. So that should give me just enough room to pop the ball in the two halves like that. Then pop the spring in the locating hole. Hopefully that's it, and now I can rejoin the two halves, tightening the four screws. Okay, so now we'll put the buffer beam back on. We've got this little hole here where this bit of plastic locates. And the coupling goes through, and then the actual frame goes on the front. So they locate together and then the two screws that hold in the frame. One in there. to it without dropping it on the floor. Oh, third time lucky, what do you reckon? More hands needed. We'll do without the tweezers. Oops. Fat finger it in. the hard part we got to get the coupling draw hook in this hole here one two 
one a coupling draw hook. Hook up the right way. Then we have the spring to go on the back of the hook. I'm going to need all my hands here so I can't hold this up to the camera. So having got that all lined up, just to make it even more fun, you now have this tiny little washer that is to go on behind the spring. All before you can get the split pin in that back. So this is going to be a mess. This is going to go horribly, horribly wrong, I can tell. Oh. Again, this is going to be a job I'm going to have to do off. So just bear with. Right. Well, that was a nightmare that you can only imagine. As you can see, there's the split pin with the washer and the spring. Just going through a little hole in the end. And fiddly, I've chased this spring and the split pin especially all over this desk, all over the floor, around the desk. But eventually I got it in. I would never have achieved this with the camera running. So, now got that assembled. Next job, uh, get the bogey mounted back in the loco. So, a bit of room. I'm going to turn this upside down again to try and make life easier. So if I'm bringing that here, you have the little housing here where the saddle goes in. I don't know if you saw that there. Yeah. So two screw holes and that little saddle hole. And inside that, whew, first off goes this saddle piece, which lays in the slot, then the bogey, then what pins it in behind is that and then the two screws go through so I can't zoom in enough on this I'm afraid and it's all heavy at one end so we'll stick that one there try and support that a bit so first off just turn you around a little bit is this little horseshoe thing there that lays inside there and obviously the one for this side as well and into that we now feed the bogey frame so we've got to feed the wire, four wires through sits on top there. It's definitely easier without the frame on. Uh -huh. So now I've got wire. Feed the other wire, pick up the wire down through the frame. wires underneath the pack ups and the motor wires fed through also never go where you want them to okay so we're getting closer we're getting closer so now we want the plastic saddles, 
that sit over the pins of the bogey frame. It turns out that the little saddles that I've already put in go you know, before the bogey frame, that the holes aren't in the centre. So you've got to make sure you get them in the right way around, otherwise they don't actually sit in properly in the slots. So, having got them in the right way around this time, which you didn't notice, because you didn't know. Same as me. Uh, now I've got the lively screws that stuck to the motor. Come here, screw. Well, I'm the same now. I've been thinking it for a while. This is not a job that I want to have to do very often. And I sincerely hope that these motors gears don't split so that I have to take this apart again to do all this because honestly it's not a nice job it's more fiddly than anything but it's not a nice job that one back in and now to do the one on the other side. Now I've got the settle in the right way around to start with. Because I was wondering in the previous edit that you haven't seen, in the previous take, why I couldn't get the screws in. And it was purely down to the fact that nothing was lining up properly. But having turned the saddle around in the bottom of the where going here quite nicely now. And the fourth screw. And there we go. One, two, three. Yeah. Right. Next job is get the wheels back in. Centre one's easy, no gears, no bearings to line up or anything like that, it's just floats. For some reason, Hamilton decided they wanted square round bearings to hold them in place, I suppose. So, actually getting them lined up now and in position, the right way round. Isn't that simple? It's a bit of a. I'd have done better just to have a square bearing with a round hole instead of this thing with a round with flats on it, which just want to pop out and not actually locate properly. But that's the designer we're working with here so again it's not a criticism but it's just something that would make life easier if it wasn't like that you know I'm sure even in the factory lining these things up would be easier because I can't get these to rotate to the proper spot See, now I've got it in, it's in the wrong way around. I've got to come around the camera. The tripod is in the way. I can't see what I'm doing. So I couldn't get it in on the spare bogey, but I've managed to get it in on this one. So I call that a win. Stay there. 
as soon as you touch it, it moves. That's it. Right. So, base plate only goes on one way round. Obviously, something is not lining up. One of the bearings isn't lining up because it won't go down. Which one is it? Is that it? I don't know, Hampton thought this was a great idea design wise, but it is what we've got. Please be there. Now I want each one. Locate the springs, pickups, back in the slots on the well. That's that, right? Bogey side frames. See if I can get these back on, hopefully, without snapping them in half. Like I did when I come to take them off. Squeeze onto the tapered lugs. It's one side. Make sure the stub axle is through the hole. And the other side. Okay, so now, hopefully somewhere here, I'll have another box of bits. I have, from the back of the bogey, in the bag, a brand new, oh, I 43 or whatever it was which is in there so I'll just take off the two bits of sprue locate that in the frame at the back that was the bit that got broken off by the 
bolt when it moved in the two longer screws is what I need now. We're nearly done. Okay. So that is now the bogey completely refitted. So we turn it over. All we've now got is the four wires to fit back in to the terminal bar. So the two from the motor, the orange and the grey, and the black and the red the positive feeds, ensuring I'll keep it with the black and the red. On the other end, um, track, track, B, B, so easy enough, and I'm going to do that without the camera on, because I can't see, and you won't be able to see anything. So I'll be back in a sec. So that's what we've got on the terminal bar. we got the orange and grey of motor A, which is the one that I've not disconnected. I have motor B are the ones that I have to connect, again grey and red, and then black and the red from the track, and I've got to twist those together and get them in, so once I've done that, I'll come back. Okay, so we now connect the wires up on the board, tape the wires to where they were taped previously, so all we've got to do now is refit the body shell and the fan. So the fan is easy, just a little plug. The body shell should just nicely slip over. Thanks, last words, of course. Something's tight on something. That's it. Four screws to hold the body on. These are easy. These are the long screws. Can't get them wrong. So I'll just roll that over carefully. And one at a time. Two at this end, you can't actually see on the camera. Oh, I'm glad that's done. Next time I'll see if I can run it on a bit of track to make sure it all works nicely. Catch you again.